days, Son San had served as a prime minister under Sihanouk, and before that as a personal tutor when Sihanouk was a young king. But now they were divided, and their rift was only papered over for the sake of the coalition. <laughs> We still have a long way to go, my sons, Sihanouk says. But the United Nations is a world organization and many independent countries support us. So the Vietnamese are alone and very isolated, says Sihanouk. to uh, persuade the Vietnamese to deal with me, to uh, settle peacefully our differences. Uh, but I did not succeed. Now it is too late to uh, have Sihanu uh, with the Vietnamese. I uh, uh, am not accustomed to play uh, uh, a double game. <laughs> a double game, no. But uh, having failed in my attempts to settle the problem, our dispute directly with Hanoi, now I decide once for all to be in the coalition. I will not resign. For many Kampucheans, Sihanouk's return was an omen. He was still revered as the living God King. As they pressed forward to touch him in person, they called out his old title, Father King. Others were incredulous. How could Sihanouk join in a new coalition with Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge? Yes, the horrors of the Khmer Rouge are well known. I, I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, five children of mine, 14 grandchildren of mine, were killed by the Khmer Rouge. In my heart, in my spirit, there are there is much suffering, but uh, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, wipe out the Khmer Rouge. So we have to try to soften their behavior. They used to be very cruel. And uh, I continue to uh, say to them, please, please avoid to be cruel. Please be like uh, the other Cambodians. And uh, it seems that uh, they would like to listen more or less to me. Uh, I am not sure that uh, they have changed their mind, but uh, the fact is that uh, they are intelligent enough to see that uh, they cannot go on uh, as they used to be before. China would continue to back the Pol Pot forces come what may. Chinese trucks and generous military aid were shipped through Thailand to revive the Khmer Rouge. The Chinese declared that these guerrillas would bleed the Vietnamese. Pol Pot himself had survived, but he discreetly retired from any public political role. However, as military commander, he was vital to regrouping the Khmer Rouge and mounting their war of attrition to wear down the Vietnamese. Once they'd recovered, the Khmer Rouge were able to mobilize up to 40,000 fighters. Later, the Vietnamese succeeded in overrunning all the camps and guerrilla bases along the border. This was a serious blow to the other resistance factions, but the Khmer Rouge were undaunted. Operating in small teams, their guerrillas continued to range throughout the country, laying ambushes and striking terror. Understandably, there was nothing the Khmer Rouge could ever do to redeem themselves in the eyes of most Kampucheans. Nevertheless, they made a number of public gestures in a vain attempt to improve their image. In a chilling understatement, the Khmer Rouge leaders now conceded that yes, some mistakes were made. But of course they were not to blame for the mass murders or any policy of genocide. These were conspiracies hatched by the Vietnamese, they said. Incredibly, after a series of public meetings, 
the Khmer Rouge claimed that they had renounced communism altogether. Henceforth, the Communist Party itself had been disbanded. Pol Pot's closest partner and his deputy prime minister was Yang Sari. Speaking at a Khmer Rouge base inside Kampuchea, he denies that dissolving the Communist Party was just a ploy. We started our Communist Party in order to oppose the Vietnamese. Regardless of Communist theory, we could not abolish the borders between our countries. ទូរទស្សនិកទូរទស្សនិកជនសាជាថ្មីម្ដងទៀតហើយសូមថ្លែងអំណរគុណដល់ការយកចាត់ទុកដាក់តាមដានទស្សនាបាន <coughs> ជាជាជាជាដូនជាចំនួនមួយអាទិត្យមួយសប្តាហ៍កាលពីសប្តាហ៍មុនបាទ <coughs> ហើយសូមស្វាគមន៍ខ្មួយស្រីខ្មួយមានឈ្មោះអីដែរហើយសូមចែងនិយាយខ្មែរអឺណាក់ឡើយនិយាយខ្មែរទីមើលហើយឈ
a better purpose for going to the temple. So now I, I just feel a lot better as a person now that I've done this. So you, you used to think that it's, it's, it's a boring thing to go to the oh temple, yeah. but not anymore, right? Yeah, it was difficult to understand. Um, I kind of just went because my grandparents, my parents think it's a good thing for me. So, you know, you just agree with your parents, but uh, I just got to learn a deeper understanding to sure. why we do this. Sure, it's uh, very good. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, became a nun. You know, you, you, you learn a lot. Did it was good that you don't have to shave your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a good thing. Yeah, are, are you looking forward to do it again for next year or so? Uh, next year, I don't know mm. if um, there's. I have plans already next year, but um, you know things involving school. But I heard next year it, it might be a more like yeah. serious yeah. Okay. experience. Yeah. Okay. So from your experience, side, you think you would recommend some of your friends around your age, do who become uh, who can come like one week. As a nun like that, in, uh, uh, temple. I mean, the following year, so. Uh, definitely. I mean, like, uh, I usually in school I would talk to my friend, and sometimes like conversations would end up talking about temple and monks and everything. And um, I actually talked to them online. I was like, I told them I was gonna be a precept for one week, and they're like, they're surprised, but excited at the same time. And as they asked me, how come? didn't tell me that uh, there was an academy for it. I was like, oh, I thought you knew. So they're like, are they going to do it next year? Uh, are they going to have the academy next year? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. And they said they would definitely want to come. Yeah. Uh, គួរតបានទៅបួសបានមកមកទឹកអញ្ចឹងដែរនៅក្នុងវត្តពុទ្ធវិជួយឲ្យយើងមានសន្តិភាពនៅក្នុងចិត្តហើយយើងដឹងព
ดยเฉพาะเวลาขโมยคะแนนในบ้านโจลในขนมบุริสคาร์มีในบ้านบุหนังเคยทำมีการไปเศร้าทักดังกาเปิดถ้าตาเยิงบอลซอนแต่เลือกบุปผุดบอลซอนอย่างไม่ลูกชายเยอะมาช